This is our Mechanical Design 2, Project 1, our project on anti-lock brakes. I'm Carolyn Rendon. I'm David Hilton. I'm Fanny Lemay. All right, a little introduction, history of, um, we're going to go over the history of anti-lock brake systems, how the systems work, and the future of our brake systems. A little bit about the history of the brakes. They were invented by this French guy in 1929, and the uh, initial use of them were to prevent skidding on the aircraft. In the 50s, they made a second appearance, but only in the aerospace industry. And the first um, in the Dunlop Maxarex system was used. And this system was a fully mechanical system, 30% efficiency, measures the relative speed of the two discs. When the relative angle is larger than 60 degrees, it engages and releases the brakes until the disc stops spinning. Um, after the, it can cycle up to 10 times and it can hold the brakes off for up to four seconds at a time. It was tested in the 1960 on three different vehicles. They used it in the Ferguson P99 racing car, Jensen FF, and the Ford Zodiac. Uh, it, they found that it was very expensive and unreliable and discontinued using them at that point. In 1971 is when the Bendix Corporation introduced sure brakes. This was the first time they used computers and they had three channel for uh, sensor all wheel ABS featured on the Imperial right here. Nissan came out with something similar that year, uh, their EAL electro anti-locks, and GM came out with the Trackmaster for their real world only ABS and that was on the pedal models. More history. In 1985 is the first year that they actually started installing them as a standard option. And in, in 1988, BMW had the first electronic uh, hydraulic ABS. And Alfredo's going to go on how they work. Well, ABS, anti-lock braking systems, they are designed to automatically regulate brake pressure on the brake systems to actually prevent um, losing control of steering capabilities and handling while doing emergency stopping or hard braking under maybe rain conditions and stuff like that that you might have to stop in a, in a, in a hurry. So, by preventing the wheel locking up, they make the vehicle safer and the uh, operator can therefore um, control the, the vehicle while stopping, maybe not in a shorter distance, but more efficiently while being able to still maintain control of other things and focus on hazards on the road and, and preventing you know, all this that may cause me and later. So they do this while monitoring speed and uh, monitoring speed throughout and So, so we have to understand some terms when speaking about anti-lock braking systems. There's some acronyms that uh, we're gonna define so they better understand the model. Uh, we got an EVCM, what is known as the Electronic Brake Control Module. It's usually the brain in which um, it's uh, an electronic uh, device that it's usually mounted, it, depending on the type of anti-lock brake system, usually mounted uh, next to the master cylinder and it, basically a microprocessor that is programmed um, to control all the signals and sensors that you know that the system contains to do its to do its work. Uh, it controls uh, what are normally open anti-lock pressure valves or APVs, uh, which are solenoids that they they are usually open, permitting just normal brake fluid, just like any other normal brake system. All right, the hydraulic. Uh, um, would pass from the master cylinder to the lines, down to the calipers and all that, but these uh, APVs, they're normally open, but due to the signals maybe sensed by the, by the sensors in the wheels and the, the electronic brake control module tells them they close, not permitting more pressure down to the calipers, therefore regulating pressure, and either or that, or they open up when, when, when more pressure is needed at that specific tire, if that is the, the way that that system would work, as we would see the differences between those. 
Uh, we have vehicle speed sensors that also, depending on the type of system, which we're going to go at after in a little detail, they have one per wheel, maybe one per just uh, an axle, so we're going to see more variation of that, but they're just, they're, 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 they're the ones responsible to either monitor, monitoring the axle speed or the wheel speed to permit us, permit the uh, EBCM know how fast the vehicle is going and what is the difference between the wheels so it can, so it can prevent it off from. All right. Like then, if you would compare an ABS system with a normal hydraulic brake, uh, we have to say hydraulic because it uses the, it uses brake fluid, it's not like other earlier uh, AB, um, braking systems which were purely mechanical. So if you would put a hydraulic brake system and an ABS brake system together, like in, to compare them, the ABS would have all the other parts that the normal hydraulic would have, but with these new uh, mechatronic or electro, mechanical components that would assist into improving the efficiency of just the regular hydraulic brake system. It is also important to know that when an ABS system is not, uh, when the vehicle is operating under very low speed, all right, and it is just like a normal hydraulic, since these open valves will stay open, and uh, once you have like a hard braking scenario, that's when the ABS kicks in. We have different types of ABS. Uh, the one found normally on all of our vehicles, which is the one that we kind of like experience the most since most of us drive cars, is the one that has the four channel, four sensor anti lock braking system. It is the most efficient because of how the name states it. It has four channels, therefore it reads signals from four different sensors, which each sensor is connected in a way to um, monitoring each wheel individually, its speed of it, all right? And then they also have a separate valve for each one of the four wheels, and so they monitor each, uh, the controller monitors each wheel individually, it allows for maximum safe braking. Uh, the three channel, three sensor anti lock brakes is, is found uh, maybe on some pickup trucks or light trucks, which are, it's going to be just slightly less efficient than the four channel, four sensor, but the front, which is where you have, uh, you need the most uh, stopping control due to the, since the handling is also in that one right there. You have two sensors and two, two valves, so each one for the wheels individually, so it's very efficient in the front, but it can be just slightly inefficient in the rear because it's gonna go off sensor that reads the rear axle uh, speed. So for that sensor to kind of sense that that, the, that part of the system is going under lockup or skidding, it would have to be both wheels at once doing it, and you might have the, the, the situation of only one wheel Kind of skating, so that could be uh, uh, something that is not as uh, efficient as the four, as the earlier one. We also have to look at the one that has just one sensor and one uh, one valve that's usually found on pickup trucks, and that one the will only have it will have like a T fitting maybe on the differential that will split into then the each individual brake line that would go to the, the, each wheel, but it will only read through one sensor and will only activate, you know, through that one valve. So the control module will have only one signal to work with, that would take for one channel. Now we're gonna talk about the future. Thank you. Okay, the, the future and evolution of anti-lock brake systems. Now, the ABS itself hasn't changed too much in the past 20 years. What has changed is where they've been applied and also the systems that they're incorporated into newer systems. One new place they've been applied is in motorcycles. BMW is one of the first companies to use anti-lock brake systems on motorcycles, but there's also other companies, Honda, uh, Suzuki, which are doing it now too. Um, it has the same quick stopping effects that it has in cars, but it has some added benefits. It also can help prevent falls and slides because it helps you maintain control instead of skidding out. Um, they're not currently mandatory in the United States, um, but they are. there is in Europe a law that might make it uh, mandatory there by 2017 that all motorcycles must have ABS. BMW is going to be the first manufacturer to have its standard on all of their models.
Okay, uh, this is one of the new systems that ABS has been applied to. It's called Brake Assist. Basically, it's a sensor inside the braking system which can sense when you're doing a panic stop and immediately applies full braking pressure and then cycles the ABS. So even if you don't push the pedal all the way down, you'll still come to a stop quicker. Uh, studies have shown that it reduces braking distance by about 45%. Okay, and the other new, this is one of the newer systems on cars, is the electronic stability control. And basically what it is, is when you're going through a corner to prevent oversteer or understeer, um, what it will do is it will sense the traction at each particular wheel that has extra sensors, and then it'll cycle the individual ABS using the four channel system that uh, Alfredo talked about earlier, so it can keep the right amount of traction force on each individual wheel so that you never over or understeer. You keep your car at the same heading that you actually intended it to. Um, this will help. This helps prevent rollovers in both cars and SUVs. SUVs, actually, the National Transportation Safety Board says it can reduce the rollovers by about 40%. So basically, as conclusion, we have found that uh, the further we use and the further we develop an ABS system, the safer uh, uh, our braking efficiency will be our stopping power. Therefore, we think that this this uh, system has a lot of potential to other uses, not only cars, motorcycles, and again, and the possibilities are endless. So basically, there's no stopping it. Thank you very much.